do you just want to be mediocre or do you want to excel and be a renegade of the future if so let me tell you what south africa did to help the employees be become the best they can possibly be the skills development act 97 of 1998 This act was put in place by government in 1998 in the midst of high levels of unemployment, low levels of investment in the South African market, pronounced disparities in income, income distribution, inequality of opportunity as a, a result of apartheid and poverty. Um, and then the government aimed to address two main priorities through this act. Firstly, um, the need to improve skills and increase productivity in order to compete successfully in the global economy. And then secondly, the need to reverse apartheid imbalances and to create a more inclusive and cohesive society. The aims of this act are endless, but to me, there are three main ones. Firstly, to improve the overall living standard of people in South Africa through improving their qualifications and skills. Secondly, to promote entrepreneurship in the workplace. And then lastly, to encourage employees to keep on improving themselves. A business has to pay 1% of their total payroll to SARS at the end of the month. This is known as a Skills Development Levy, or an SDL. As seen in the diagram, from that 1% that the business pays, it will be split up into different sections. Let's imagine that 1% 1 is 100 Rand, just for example purposes. The NSF will receive 20 Rand and the, and the QCTO 50 cent. The remaining, the remaining 79 Rand 50 will then be allocated towards the CETA, which will be explained a bit later. 10 Rand of that will go straight to the CETA, and the remaining 69, yeah, 69 Rand 50 either mandatory grants or pivotal and discretionary grants. A CETA, which is also known as a Sector Education and Tr Training Authority, is vital when looking at the Skills Development Act. They have two main jobs. The first one is to receive a business's Workplace Skills Plan, or WPF, which is a document listing skills that are lacking in the environment of that business. The CETA's job is then to identify the crucial skills that are generally needed in that business sector and then implementing programs that, will that would help improving these skills. snack-sized gap to fill? Try the new snack-sized Colonel Burger from Kentucky Fried Chicken. Cooked with that secret blend of 11 herbs and spices. I can't wait! Only $1.25. Fills the gap in your tummy. Won't make a hole in your pocket. Fill the gap with a kind of burger! I can't wait! Mr. Kearney, you're drifting. Wake up. Their second job is to approve the annual training report, or ATR from the business, de detailing which of those programs were actually imp implemented in that year. Both documents have to be submitted to the CETA by 30 April. There are both positive and negative implications caused by this act. Firstly, on the positive, si positive side of things, developing skills in a business will not be compromised through budget cuts as the SDL has to be paid. Another, po another positive in the eyes of the business is that 20% of the skills development levy could be claimed back if the WPF and the ATR are submitted on time. It can be negative in some aspects as well though, like when the CETA's job is not done properly and large sums of money are actually lost. Unfortunately, the business's, the business, unfortunately, the business's claimed back amount is no longer 50%, but since 2013, only 20%. After this exciting lesson about the Skills Development Act 97 of 1998, you now know what it is, what the aims of the Act are, the Skills Development Levy that is paid to SARS, CETAs, and also the implications of this Act. Thank you for listening. This is MKIE, and I'm Ryan Newman.
走